What's the word, y'all? Man, Shams dropped. Shams drop. It's a beautiful day in the NBA with Shams drop. You know, actually, it's not beautiful for one fan base. You know how upset I would be if I woke up in the morning, I looked at my phone, and the first thing I saw was Shams dropped an article about some turmoil within my organization. My entire day would be blown. I'm not even getting out of bed. And that's what the Brooklyn Nets fan base went through today because even though there's a lot of different rumors and a lot of different things being said in this article, the main thing is about Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets front office being at an impasse when it comes to his next contract. And I'll be honest with you, this is not that big of a surprise, man. If you watch my podcast, you know we talked about Kyrie Irving and his future of Brooklyn quite Quite a bit. We have this game where we, um, it's called like, what is the percentage of? That's not the official name, but that's what we do. Like, what is the percentage you see Zach Levine resigning to Chicago? Somebody say 100%. That was. That was me. <laughs> that was me. And somebody would say 80%. And here's why. Um, one of the ones I had brought up was what is the percentage you see Kyrie Irving re-signing or being a part of the Brooklyn Nets next season? And we got a vast difference between what could happen. I know somebody picked like 90%. Somebody picked like 40% because Kyrie Irving has been that unpredictable of a player. And the reason we reacted to this and not some of the other rumors that have come out revolving around Kyrie Irving and Brooklyn Nets, because this is not the first time we've heard something like this. I think because it's from Shams, it's way more reputable. reputable? Is that the word? I don't know if I've ever seen an NBA player, at least off the top of my head, refute the reportings of a Shams rumor or refute the reportings of an Adrian Wojnarowski. These are the two pillars of truth in NBA basketball. So if Shams says it, some of it has to be true. So that's why I reacted to it. Also, because clicks, it's the offseason, baby, I got to pay these bills. You feel me? All right, let's talk about it. I cannot read you the entire athletic article. I know someone that got us some, some relatively deep trouble because they showed an article by the athletic. It makes sense. This is behind the paywall. They don't want you showing their article to thousands of people. So I'll read you the big tidbits. I think it, the word I tried to say was tidbits and not tibbits. It's a D, B instead of BB. Either way, Kyrie Irving has until June 29th to either accept or decline his $36.9 million player option. However, multiple sources tell The Athletic that the conversation about Kyrie Irving's future have gone stagnant between him and the Brooklyn Nets. An impasse currently exists amongst the parties that clears a way for the seven-time All-Star consider an open market. Whoa. Kyrie Irving, Brooklyn Nets, what the heck is going on? And we did a video a little while ago. Uh, we reacted to a Bleach Report article about the top trade targets for a certain team. And in that video, I was talking about exactly this, right? Where, like, there's a lot of different um, decisions that have to be made in the Brooklyn Nets organization. And I got some pushback from that in the comments. Kenny, he said he wanted to stay. Kenny, Ke Kevin Durant is not going to allow this to happen. And, and my response to that was, I've seen Kyrie say on two different other occasions that he wanted to stay somewhere and something else happened months later. Not saying it's all necessarily him, but somebody saying that they want to be a part of a team at the end of a playoff run doesn't necessarily hold up a couple months later when they reflect on everything that's happened. So someone saying, I want to be here. He told the Boston Celtics fans, if you'll have me, I'll come back. He was gone. He told the little kid in Cleveland. The, the kid asked him, will you ever leave? He said no. Now, I understand they backed him into a corner on that one. You feel me? If a kid that's eight years old walked up to me and said, Kenny, are you going to forever do YouTube? I can't tell this kid if he is a big fan of what I do. Hey, man, in two years, I'm probably going to retire. I'm just going to give him the yeah and let him be happy. You know what I'm saying? So I, I understand. Imagine how he said in that moment. When four years, I don't I don't really know. My contract is up. The eight-year-old going to be like, what the hell are you talking about? Either way. Somebody saying that they want to be here does not matter in the grand scheme of things. And that is especially true when you consider the circumstances that the Brooklyn Nets are in. Kyrie Irving has missed about half of the games since he signed with the Brooklyn Nets. Again, part of that is because he had an entire injury that held him out of season. And then we had this whole pandemic thing um, where he could not play or did not play for a big chunk of it. And then when he did come back, it was only for the home games. There's a lot of stuff that, that led to Kyrie Irving missing 50% of the games, but he still missed 50% of the games. So if I am the front office, I know how talented Kyrie Irving is. Kyrie Irving is one of the most talented players I've ever had the pleasure to watch play basketball. But there's a a lot of stuff that comes with giving Kyrie Irving a long extension. It's just facts. But there's still a part of me that was thinking, well, if Kevin Durant wants Kyrie Irving back, then he will be back. There's no way the front office is going to go against anything Kevin Durant says because they blew up their entire team. Listen, anytime you see me wear a shirt that is a, a different team other than Chicago, 99.9% uh, .9 of the time it is a vintage tee that I, I got because I like vintage tees. You never really catch me wearing a current day uh, apparel for another team, right? Other than the Brooklyn Nets. Because there's a period of time. We're talking about the Brooklyn Nets. They had D'Angelo Russell. They had Karis LeVert. They had Jared Allen. They had Jared Dudley talking trash to Ben Simmons. That team 
made me so much of a fan of what they were doing that I bought a hoodie with the current Brooklyn Nets logo on it. That's not like me, but that team was so likable, and the future of that team was so great. Well, they had an opportunity to bring in Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant and gut the rest, but hey, we can build a super team, and they did that. So they got rid of this young, promising core to bring in two of the greatest players of all time. And then what happened a little while later? Another one of the greatest players of all time made himself available, and we made a trade for that. So why the heck would I do anything other than what Kevin Durant thinks is right? Because if we don't, and he decides he won out too, then that core that we had, all of the picks that we traded between getting uh, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and getting James Harden are, are gone. And a reset for the Brooklyn Nets. Hey, listen, we laughed at, at uh, Raphael. I almost said Raphael Devers. That's not him. Uh, uh, Raphael, Raphael Stone, who made the trade to send James Harden to Brooklyn because he got pick equity and pretty much only pick equity. We laughed and said, hey, this team might be one of the most dominant teams for the next five years. Those picks ain't going to be worth nothing. And now we get these reports and Houston Rockets fans are like, yeah. Now, there are a couple different ways this can go. This could be a lot of smoke, and then Kyrie Irving is back in the lineup at the beginning of the next season. This could be Kyrie Irving is signed and traded to a new team. Kyrie Irving walks in free agency. Or the, the worst-case scenario, if you're a Brooklyn Nets fan, is that this disrupts everything that's going on within their organization so much that Kevin Durant is like, okay, I think I won out as well. And I know I'm all over the place, but that's just the way it is when you have something like this and, and you don't necessarily have notes. I understand that. So my question is what exactly is is causing this? I would assume that Kyrie Irving wants a long-term deal and they're just saying no. Or Kyrie Irving wants a max contract and they're just saying no. Because again, though Kyrie Irving is one of the most talented basketball players of all time, the three years that we've had with you on this team has been nothing but question mark after question mark, injury after injury, controversy versus controversy. It's not worth it. And this, again, this front office traded away so much to get these guys in. They low-key kind of, and this is from an outside, I ain't really in the organization. It feels like they might have lost a lot of the control that they had in building the first initial team. We're like, you have to please KD. Not saying that KD is a hard person to please, but it seems like you have to please KD. You you had to please Kyrie Irving. You had to please James Harden. And please James Harden was getting James Harden out of the city. So maybe there's a word like, let's do something without consulting Kevin because we believe in ourselves and our ability to build a team if we have to ship Kyrie Irving away. I don't really know. So I asked Twitter to throw me different trade ideas or whatever, um for Kyrie Irving and, and what I realize is that us at home have no idea what we're talking about uh, because I saw a vast range of the type of value that Kevin Durant or not Kevin Durant Kyrie Irving has because again I think we all can agree that Kyrie Irving is just just pure buckets and pure talent but there's a lot of baggage and I think that part of that baggage comes to play when you're considering a trade if I'm a GM that wants Kyrie Irving on my team and I know that him and the Brooklyn Nets can't get something figured out, why would I gut my entire roster to send the Brooklyn Nets three first-round picks, four really solid players? That doesn't feel likely. But if you look at the, the replies from my, my tweet, a lot of people are looking to, to do like the gutting to get an all-time great, an NBA Hall of Famer, which makes sense. But it doesn't at the same time. But then I also see the other side of the coin. Where people understand the lack of leverage, but they're going to the crazy. They're going so far to the other side. It's like, we rather just let Kyrie walk to get some of the pieces. Y'all put it together. Also in this article, it says the Lakers, the Knicks, and the Clippers are expected, are expected to be interested in Irving if he heads elsewhere. I believe that part of um, Woj putting these type of things is, is it helps to click for sure, to get three uh, three teams in the top markets in basketball to say they would be interested. Because this, at this point, is all speculation. They're expected because of what the Lakers do. They're expected to want Kyrie Irving. The Knicks might be expected to want Kyrie Irving because they haven't had good point guard play or an amazing point guard play in 50 years of basketball. When was Walt Frazier hooping? Since then. And then the Clippers, because they're another team out west in California that might have some contracts to make it work. I'm not completely sure that all three of these teams would even want Kyrie Irving. I've seen Knicks fans on my mentions when I made that tweet, throw me the trades. I've had Knicks fans argue whether or not they would be actually interested in Kyrie Irving. Now, some of you might think that's crazy because what else do the Knicks have? I understand it. I legitimately understand. I guess there's a price tag to everything, right? If if it's trading for Kyrie Irving 
trading away some of our assets for Kyrie Irving and we also have to give Kyrie Irving this long-term deal? I don't know if I would do that if I'm the New York Knicks. If it's trading for Kyrie Irving and I don't have to give up anybody of super value to me, maybe it's interesting. Or I don't have to give him that super long contract, maybe it's interesting to me. But having a combination of the two would scare me just a little bit. But Kyrie Irving has succeeded to a level in his NBA career that why would him and his agents ever accept an incentives-based deal where it's like, you have to play at least 70% of the NBA season. Why would they ever accept that? He's Kyrie Irving. If you don't want to sign me, we got seven other teams in free agency with a max contract spot that even though it might not be the best situation for myself, I know if I'm about my money, those teams would be willing to give me that money and they ain't got to sign on a center-based deal. They'd be happy to welcome me. But all I know, wh whether he stays or he leaves or it's a sign and trade or Kevin Durant is the next domino to fall. There's about to be an extremely, extremely crazy 30 for 30 about this whole team in the next decade or so. And I cannot wait for it because I feel like there's so much stuff that happened in this team with this team over the past four seasons that us as the, the average person, we don't know exactly. And I want to hit those stories. I want to hit those stories, man. They're talking about Evan Fournier, Alec Burks, Nerlens Noel, and Kimball Walker as salary filler that could be thrown into this trade. Also, draft capital. That's a ton. But again, the Brooklyn, not the Brooklyn Nets, the New York Knicks were like the 11th seed this season. It, do you have attachments to any of these people? Probably not. But you might have attachments to some of the picks that might be offloaded as well. And then when you talk about the Clippers, this is from Wolves again. Um, Norman Powell, Marcus Morris, Luke Kennard. And Reggie Jackson all have like between 11 to $17 million contracts. You package in a couple of, low, couple of those and then boom, you got a deal. I, I think the most interesting timeline for me personally would be if they traded away Kyrie Irving for a couple solid role players. And then now it's Kevin Durant, Ben Simmons in good depth. I think that could go a decent amount. Is that good enough to win a championship? Probably not. But I think it would be cool because I like watching KD get buckets. I'm going to be honest with you. I like KD getting buckets and just him doing his thing. And I'm, I'm curious to see what the version of Ben Simmons we get. And if we could get just adequate, solid role players around them, I think it could be a good team. Um, it was also a report that they're not that interested in bringing back Nicholas Claxon if he gets anything more than a mid-love exception. And I would assume, based on the teams that have money this year, um, a lot of them being relative like early teams in their rebuild. There's going to be a team out there willing to give Nicholas Claxton a little bit more than a mid-level exception. And so he might e not even be a part of the Brooklyn Nets next season. This is a dumpster fire currently based on all of these rumors. And would it be in the NBA offseason a couple days in? I'm here for it. Can we talk about the Pacers? And the fact that Miles Turner has been in trade rumors every year of his NBA career. They just told us two weeks ago, no, nah, we keeping him. And now it's like, hmm. Maybe we are going to listen. Miles has not had any stability because he always got one one bag packed at the dough because he feel like he might get traded any day. I'm team trade him, though. I know I'm in the minority probably when it comes to um, when you're asking Indiana Pacer fans. I'm team trade him. I know he's only 25 years old, but I think he's going to be a valuable asset. When you look at the center play across the league, you look at the amount of money he's he's making, and you look at his skill set, there's going to be teams out there willing to pay not top, top dollar, but a good amount. I'm not team trade him just because I'm team trade him when the right deal comes up. The Timberwolves have discussed a deal revolving around Clint Capella. So that could that could mean that Car Anthony Towns is going to be sliding over to the floor like it's a KOT4Q rebuilding challenge video, which I actually don't I don't hate. I think we saw glimpses of Carl Anthony Towns being able to be better defensively on the perimeter um, at that four position. And it feels it feels like that's the next chapter of his career was like, give me buckets and be a four rather than trying to bang down low with centers every single night. And they, they could use some of that great rim protection that Clint Capella can possibly provide. We had two different versions of Clint Capella this season from my viewing uh, standpoint, where it's like the first half, he was still dealing with the ankle injury or Achilles injury, I don't remember. And then towards the second half of the season, once the Atlanta Hawks started to turn up, a lot of that was Clint Capella being back on his demon time on the def defensive side of the ball. What does this trade look like? I've seen a lot of people include, like Malik Beasley, I, I don't know. They want to op open up more spots or more minutes for Nyeka Kongu, so... I understand that part. The Kings had said earlier that they are willing to trade the fourth overall pick. It looks like they won't be doing that. They had some conversations revolving around Zion Collins, but they said they're okay with drafting there, which I love for the Kings fan base um, because I thought McNear was going to go out there and make some type of bonehead trade just to get a veteran in there for the fourth overall pick because this is the last year of my contract. So what the hell do I have to lose? 
Um, and I'm happy that they're going to use that fourth pick. Or it looks like they might use that fourth pick. Maybe this is all smoke. Talks about the Jazz having 15 head coaches on their candidacy pool. I'm not reading all these names. But the one that interests me the most was Jason Terry, who had been uh, coaching in the G League. Sam Gasale is dope. Adrian Griffin. I just, I'm just i telling you, bro, it's about time that Adrian Griffin gets a job. I thought he was going to be the Bulls' next head coach low-key with him having ties to Chicago and everything. Um, but we ended up going with Billy Donovan. Um, but those are some of the names. Terry Stotts is the guy I don't want there, but whatever. I would love Frank Vogel in Utah. I, I, I think I said that on my podcast as well. That's only if that's only if you're running it back to some extent. If you're having Rudy and you're having Dono, I like Frank Vogel there. If you're trading away Rudy, I don't like Frank Vogel there. That, that's what I'm saying. And that's pretty much it from from uh, from Shams, man. So I, I think I said a lot and maybe not anything at all in this video, but that's what a Kenny Frill video has turned into. Let me know what you think about the Brooklyn Nets slash Kyrie Irving in this upcoming free agency period. All I know is we're a couple days to free agency and we already got like a superstar caliber player potentially moving again. It's This is why we love the NBA. No days off. 